Hey, what's going on guys? This is Kevin the Tech Ninja, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about a TV that I bought two months ago. Now, as you guys know, I review tons of products and I get products in and out all the time, but every once in a while when I get a product and I love it so much, I have to send it back to them, I end up buying it for myself. And this is one of those products. This TV is from Samsung. It's an 85 inch QN90A and I bought it after reviewing the 65 inch version of this TV. Now this TV costs nearly $4,000 from samsung.com and since then it's been coming down in price, they've been having deals and I ended up finding a pretty good deal for it and I got it for just under $3,700. Samsung has made a lot of changes to this year's version of the TV and I was sort of waiting to see what the market had before I went to upgrade my current TV set. So anyways, without further ado, we're gonna talk about this TV and why I decided to buy this TV for myself. Let's take a look. Raise your hand if you are your family's tech support. Look, I've been my family's tech support since I could talk. It is insane. And it actually gets worse during the holidays with all of my uncles and cousins and grandparents. It, but what if I told you there was a free service that becomes your family's tech support this holiday season? And when I say free, I mean not a free trial, not put your credit card information down. No, 100% free from Assurian. From December 24th to the 31st, from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern time, Assurian is providing free tech support over the phone and free tech support. So if you buy a new phone or you wanna set up some smart home stuff or anything like that, they are able to help you. Just give them a call, 855-355-TECH between December 24th and the 31st, between 7 a.m. and 11 p.m. Eastern time. So now you don't have to fix someone's phone. You can kick back, drink some eggnog, and let someone else do it. So if you want more detail of specs and menus and, and things like that, I talked about that in the 65 inch version of the TV. So make sure you hit the link down below or hit the card at the end of the video to watch the 65 inch version because that'll be kind of a more in depth video. This video is more my experience using the TV and also what I think about having a TV this large and, and all those questions that may come up. First of all, unboxing a TV this large is definitely a two to three person job. And it also required a lot of planning to make it happen. Not just unboxing it, but for me getting into my basement was a task and a half. And, and that box ended up banged up a ton, just trying to get it down the steps. It is just a massively large box. Now, once the TV was unboxed and set up on the stand, which I mean, I don't know how long that took to be quite honest, the TV is so large that it's very top heavy. So even on the stand, you, you tap the TV, it starts to wobble and it starts to shake. And you know, with me having a toddler at home, that was something that couldn't go. So I debated about mounting it on the wall, but the TV is over hundred pounds and that's a little shaky. So I decided to buy these little straps from Amazon that will allow you to mount it on the wall, but still have it on the stand. So now I have the TV set up, it is safe and secure. And I also did purchase the QN 900A soundbar. I wanted to go with a soundbar instead of a proper theater setup because I mean, this is not like a forever home and I didn't wanna run wires all throughout the basement and things like that. And I'm not a stickler for sound. So this soundbar is a Dolby Atmos soundbar. And for me, the untrained non-professional audio guy, I think it sounds freaking awesome and it has a wireless subwoofer too. And for me, it sounds just good enough where I'm very comfortable with it. I don't feel like it's lacking or missing anything. Gaming, movies, sports, all those things sound really good. It's the best audio I've ever had. So for me, that's good enough. Now overall, this TV is a super sleek looking TV. It is very simple. It doesn't have like the coolest design around. It's not super thin like OLED, but for me, I think it looks pretty decent. The bezels are pretty thin, but it is kind of thick because it is a backlit TV. So you do have that thickness, uh, you know, for all the backlighting that is required. I do think the stand looks pretty good, but once you throw the sound bar in front of it, you can't see the stand. So my use case for, for TV is going to be primary YouTube, Netflix, YouTube TV, and then I have gaming. Gaming is not the number one feature for this TV for me, but it is something that is very important because when I game, I wanna have a great experience. When watching 4K content, I think this TV looks amazing. Now, since it's mini LED, the black levels are very dark, very comparable to OLED as the other two TVs in my house are OLED and the colors are very punchy. But the main differences with this TV compared to other TVs I've had or used is that 
the brightness, it gets very bright. It is an extremely bright TV. So when you have elements that are HDR, it is definitely a big difference between the dark elements and the bright elements. And I think that is a game changer for me. I find Netflix 4K to looks pretty solid, but at the same time, Amazon Prime 4K just looks to be a tad bit better. Now when Dolby Vision is activated, the sound with the sound bar, the picture, everything is great. I mean, this is the best TV viewing experience I have ever had due to the size of the TV, the picture and the sound. For me, I have not had a better experience outside of Andrew Edwards' house. When you have a TV this large, you gotta have some seating that just makes sense something that is super comfortable. And you gotta check out these chairs from Valencia Theater Seating. Yeah, these are something special. And let me tell you, playing games, watching TV, or just taking a nap, it is super comfortable in these seats. They have buttons on the side that lets you lean all the way back, gives you lumbar support or headrest adjustment. And I love that when you sit in them, you just sort of melt into the chair. Now also they do include USB ports so you can plug in your phone or a gaming controller and you can juice up while you're using it. I purchased two table trays and they just click into these little holes so you instantly have a tray at any time. And they also go in the armrest when you're not using them too. Now these chairs are not only super comfortable, I think they look pretty nice too with a modern and yet classy design with LEDs under the seats and in the cup holders too. I'm super happy with the Oslo setup, but check out their website because they have different sets, different sizes, and different styles that could work for your setup. I dig these chairs so much that I even told my dad about these chairs and he's actually gonna pick up a few himself. But anyways, I can't recommend these chairs enough and I'll link them down in the description below. The subwoofer comes into play with the sound bar. It fills the environment, especially when there's atmospheric sounds, the subwoofer just fills that environment really nice. And I'm not missing the back speakers, even though it's, it's Atmos, supposedly it, it can make it sound like it's behind you. Nothing sounds like it's behind you, but overall it does feel full, but you don't have that full 360 experience as you'd get with a proper you know, surround sound setup. Now when it comes to gaming, this TV can get up to 4K 120 if the game supports it, but only on HDMI 4. So the other HDMI ports do not support that as they're not 2.1. So if you have two gaming systems, you need to swap HDMIs or use a splitter, which is a bummer on a TV this expensive. Now playing Forza, it looks amazing. Forza is just a really good looking game in general, but once you have the 4K 120 and the sound, everything is solid. On the TV, it's running Tizen, and most apps you'd want to see is baked into it, even the Apple TV app. I found Tizen software to run fine. The menu structure sometimes get bogged down with too many options, and I will say it is somewhat confusing. And a lot of the apps that are on there, I did find that they would crash every, I would say every day I would get one random app crashing or hang up, or for some reason YouTube starts buffering and it won't get out of its buffering loop for whatever reason. Haven't had to turn the TV off and on much, but closing an app and reopening was sort of a thing that I ran into. And when I say it's confusing, like when I change HDMI settings and I'm actually on a source, it makes sense, it changes that source. But let's say I wanna change the, picture settings for the YouTube app or the picture settings for another app. Like, I don't know if it's modifying it for the app, for the HDMI source or for all apps. A lot of things are very confusing to me. And for someone that's not a TV expert per se, I had a really tough time figuring out all the settings in, in the menus. So I can't imagine like the layman's having a TV like this or a TV running the same software if they get stuck in the menus too. Now, a couple of things I wanna mention is this back wall behind the TV. These are little panels that I bought from Amazon and yeah, I painted them glossy white so they reflect light and I really like how they look. I'm gonna link those down below. Also, I'm using the Hue Play and Hue Sync Box. That gives me the responsive LED lighting on the back of the TV. It's a pretty cool setup. It's rather expensive, which eh, it is what it is, but I think it enhances the overall look of the TV. So overall, as a guy who reviews TVs and tests new tech all the time, it takes a lot to get me excited. And this TV was one thing that got me really excited. As a person who said, if you want the best TV, you gotta buy OLED. I've said that for many years. I now have changed my opinion. I do think mini LED has potential to be better than OLED. 
As of right now, the OLED picture, I still think maybe a little bit better, but I think mini LED, it gets brighter and the potential for burn-in is not there, which to me makes it totally worth it more than OLED. And of course, you don't have to buy the 85 inch version of this TV. I reviewed the 65 inch version of the TV. And I'm gonna leave that down in the description below. Anyways, guys, it's Kevin the Tech Ninja. Have a happy holidays, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.